arithmetic functions. No, arithmetic with functions. Oh, shit. There's shucks. a difference well, there. Well, okay? darn it. So arithmetic is like... That's like counting. Like adding and subtracting, right. multiplication, division, those things you've been doing like since, forever. Since kindergarten, basically. Well, well you probably didn't divide. Adding, yeah. yeah, but not dividing. You right. haven't div div divided, divided that long? You probably started dividing about a year or so ago. A few years. Yeah, whenever. Whenever. Okay, so we're going to do this with functions, not uh, just numbers. Uh, so the sum of f plus g, they'll write it like this, and that just means take f of x plus g of x, uh, add them together. Yeah. Oh, by the, just point of clarification here. This is not f plus g times x. Right. Because if it was, they'd have to like, they'd have to put the multiplication symbol there. Yeah. The, that, it's understood that um, this notification means that I'm a taking function. this plus this. Right. And, the, this is saying of x. Like we right. read this as we read this as f plus g of, of x. x. Right. In meaning the, x is in the function. Right. It it's important too because as we develop our math this year and especially next year, we have to have ways of representing different equations in one problem. And you can't just run through there and go y equals this, y equals this, y equals it. You'll get confused. Yeah. So we use like f and g and h to represent our functions right. and. Uh, and it's a lot of fun. Right. Um, f minus g, then, is just f of x right. minus g just of x. Just subtracting. Multiplication, you multiply. Right. Division is where it gets just a little bit trickier because you do have, like, the caveat. Whoa. The exception. Caviar? No, caveat. Oh. Doesn't that mean, like, stipulation or something like that? I, I, don't, I don't teach English, I so know. I have f, no idea what you're saying. F divided by g introduces this issue that um, you can't have g of x equals zero. Right. Because That's it's super the bottom important. of the fraction. Right. You you can put zero in for x. You can. But you can't have the denominator actually equal out to zero. Right. Hey, edge clipper. Uh, so example, find formulas for the function f plus g, f minus g, f times g, f times f, and f divided by g, and give the domain of each. <sighs> That's a lot. I guess there's not an a there. So f plus g. Of x. Of x. This is really simple. This is going to be great. We're going to add gonna, our functions just, you together. You add them together. Square root x minus 1 plus x cubed. That's it. The, please don't try and smash these together. No. Okay, this is not a fruit salad that we're trying to create. <laughs> Where you just throw whatever you yeah, want just, in. Yeah, you can't just throw it in there. Like your, like your parents do for that fruit salad they yeah. have to take to the relatives. Leftover Wednesdays. Okay. This is not happening. So the domain of this now has to do with this function has an issue with its domain. Right. Because uh, x minus 1 has to be greater than or equal right. to 0. So you add the 1 over. We're saying x has to be greater Let's than or equal to uh, positive Let's use interval one. notation we here. We will. All right. 1 comma infinity. Yep. Means that we can start at 1 and plug in any number bigger than 1. Right. And we have the restriction. There's only a couple times in math that you'll have a restriction. And if you have a radical or a fraction, yep. those That's are the ones the that you'll ones see, that we'll see most often. Yep. So. We've got, you know, we've got a radical all through this, so we'll have to pay attention to our restrictions. All through it. Okay, now we've got x minus 1 minus x cubed. That's it. Well, the domain, we hey, really didn't change same. anything. Nothing's different. And if x cubed had a domain issue, we would have to kind of mess with this a little bit more. It'd be trickier, but right. we would deal with it Yeah. Uh, if we had to. So then um, f times g. So that's just going to be... Square root of x minus 1 right. times x cubed. And the only thing that you might do is you could move the x cubed in front and make it x cubed radical of x minus 1. That's usually how you'll see it when you're right. in, in a math course. Yeah. And this cubed is not saying this no, is no, a no. cube root. This x cubed, the x cubed. Square root of x minus 1. But other uh, than that, don't, don't try to simplify it no, anymore. No, that's all you can do. There's again, no need to put an x to the sixth under the radical. Right. Again, x cubed's not messing with our domain. We still have the issue. If I plug in anything less than one, right. I get a non-real answer here. So one common and, and one is included because you can take a square root of zero. You so can. Sometimes you'll say you can't, but... You'd be wrong. You would be. F times F. Oh, this now is this is going to be interesting. Now this is going to be an interesting thing here, so pay attention to what happens. So we've got the x, square root... Yeah of x minus 1 times the square root of x minus 1, which happens to be x minus 1. Right, because uh, it's the same as like saying square root of x minus 1 squared. Right. 
because we're timesing two things together that are the that same. Are the same. Yep. And so those cancel each other out, and that's right. x minus 1. But you have to go back and look at the original function you were given to check for domain restrictions. Right. This, you still can't plug in 0 to or negative 1 or negative 2. You still can't plug in here. So even though we simplified and got rid of the issue, it's still in our domain. Yeah, in our original starting point, what was going on? Yes. Uh, Lastly, do we have room to work there? You got some I room? Got some oh, room some over up there. Here. Okay. F divided by g of x. Now, typically, these are real easy to set up because you just stick one on top of the other. Yeah, and they don't usually sort so, themselves out too too no. well. So now let's talk about Boom. the domain. Okay, let's do. Uh, we still have the one right. and greater. So, so let's go ahead and write that one down. We still have to deal with the issue on the top where you got to be greater. Go ahead and include one here. Yep. All right. And, and, then, then, and then on the bottom, we also have a situation where x just can't be zero in this case. Right. So we would just say x can't be zero. But... I didn't leave enough room there. As it turns out, though, zero is not even in the domain. Oh, so I did leave enough room there. So you okay. did leave enough room. So it didn't end up mattering. Now, if this had been, if our original domain had been like negative one to right. infinity, and then we said zero is not an option, then we would have to be like negative, negative one, one to, to zero, zero and zero to infinity. This right. is a made up example. If this had said this, x Yeah, this does not one, go with what we just did. If that had been squared to x plus one. Right. Instead, this is what the domain would end up being. Right, Kay? right. But um, yeah, since zero wasn't in the domain anyway, then it didn't matter for that one. And there you go, game over.